Hello and welcome to this Dr. Ross Mass key skill video on dealing with a single chain of outcomes involving successive independent events. Now in the previous video we saw how we could form a probability tree from a sequence of events. So for example in this tree this means for our first spin of a spinner we got red on the first spin followed by blue on the second spin. So this probability of 0.3 is saying the probability of getting a red first spin and then if we got red for the first spin, it's saying there's a probability of 0.7 for blue on the second spin. So this represents a sequence of outcomes, red, blue, blue, red, etc. Now it says I spin the spinner twice, what's the probability of getting blue then red? So blue and then red. I like to write out the sequence of outcomes. So let's follow the tree here. We're first spinning a blue and then we're spinning a red. So the probability of getting blue on the first spin is 0.7. Then if we spun a blue, the probability of spinning red on the second spin is 0.3. So we've got to follow the correct path through this tree, blue then red from left to right. So the probability of getting blue is 0.7. And then if we follow the blue, the probability of getting red on the second spin is 0.3. Now, what do we do with those two probabilities? Well, we want the probability that the first spin is blue and the second spin is red. Now, if I use the word and in probability, you times the probabilities together. So the probability the first is blue, 0.7, and the second spin is red. Because I use the word and, I times, and that is going to give you 0.21. So that is the answer. What about this second one? This is to demonstrate that we can still solve these problems even if we don't have a probability tree. And you don't need to draw out a probability tree every time. I'm going to use this idea that we just list out the sequence of outcomes. So I have a bag of five red balls, three green and two blue. I pick a ball, note the colour, replace it, so you put it back, and then pick another. What's the probability they're both green? So again, I'm just going to list out the sequence of outcomes I'm interested in. They are both green, so let's write green, green, and I'm just going to put a colon after. Now, what's the probability that the first ball is green? Well, how many balls do we have in total? Well, 5 plus 3 plus 2, that's 10 balls in total, so it's out of 10. And how many of them are green? Well, 3 of them are green. So the probability of getting green on the first pick is 3 tenths. Now, I put it back, so we've still got 5 red balls, 3 green and 2 blue in the bag. So the probabilities are still going to be the same of getting red or getting green or getting blue. So the probability of getting red, green and blue is going to be unchanged from the first pick. So what's the probability of getting green on the second pick? Well, it's still going to be 3 tenths. It's not going to change. And we say those two picks are independent because the probabilities don't change. One pick doesn't affect the probability of the other pick. And then again, because I'm using the word and, the probability of the first pick is green and the second pick is green, we times them together. And when we times these fractions together, we just times the numerators together and we times the denominators together. So it's 9 over 100, or if you prefer, 0.09.